Hello, Casey. Here's my feedback from the video you sent me. One principle of digging is putting your best defenders where most balls go. Most balls in volleyball go to this middle area of the court. So in this situation here, you make a good dig because you're in the correct spot. Now what you can do better here is get into a better digging stance. Your stance should be wide, your arm should be ready, and you should be facing the hitter. You can see you're getting into this stance after he's already made contact with the ball. Right there, that's when you're getting into that athletic stance. You want to get in this stance earlier. You could have gotten that stance now once you recognize this ball is here and it's going to the outside hitter. Fortunately, the ball is hit right to you. What I think you can add here is called a split step move. A split step is what you do to get ready to move. You can see on this play here, the libero and the outside hitter both use a split step when the hitter is about to make contact with the ball. They step, their feet come off the ground slightly, and then they get into a wider athletic stance. Another option you can do is just get stopped and ready. This defender here is not using a split step, but he is stopping his feet and getting ready. There's no motion backwards to the sides. He's just down, feet are wide, arms are ready, and he's facing the hitter. Here's a closer look at the split step. You see both the libero and the outside do it simultaneously. With their feet slightly come off the ground, they step, and then they split their stance a little bit wider. They're not really jumping, they're just splitting their stance and making it wider. Next we're going to look at your hitting. A couple things I think you do really well is you accelerate into your attacks. Next thing you do really well is a double arm lift. You can see both go arms go back, extended. You swing both arms up into your bow and arrow. What I think you can do better here is start with your left foot in front. Most middle hitters start with their left foot in front behind the 10 foot line. You can see here you start with a negative step, one, two, this left foot needs to be behind the 10 foot line. When you're running your quick sets, your tendency is to be on your penultimate step when the ball's in the setter's hands. You're more on time for a one and a half than you are for a one. Right here you want to be on this last step when the ball's in the setter's hands. So you can see you're a little bit late. That's why when your setter sets it a little bit high, you're able to hit it well. Right here, you're about to hit a 31 and a half, so you need to be on your third step or your penultimate step when the ball's in the setter's hands. The reason this doesn't work sometimes is because the setter sets it lower. This is a 31, but you're on your penultimate step when the ball's in his hands. You need to be on your last step when the ball's in his hands to hit this quicker set. You see here, you hit this one well. This is a quick set. This is a 1. You're on your last step when the ball's in his hands. Another play where your timing is much better. This is a one and you're on your last step when the ball's in his hands. This is a quicker set. You're on your penultimate step when he's setting. You need to be on this step 
when he sets this ball. This is a good adjustment to make when you're late. Like all great hitters, you sell your off speed like you're going to attack. You got the arms back, get into your bow and arrow. It looks like you're going to hit, and then you go off speed. This lower set, you're on your penultimate step, you need to be on your last. And your setters need to be consistent. Is it going to be this set? The, the, the 31 and a half, the one and a half, or is it going to be 31? This is the one you're connecting on more. But you'll start to connect on the faster one if you get on your last step here when the ball's in his hands. Here's a player I think you should watch, Robert Landy Simone. You can see in serve receive he starts a little more off the net. This makes his transition much easier. He's always approaching with his left foot in front. He's always on his last step when the ball is in the setter's hands. This play here takes a lot of trust with your setter. To trust that when he's taking it with his platform he can keep you in rhythm. You can see here he's on his last step when the ball is set. Again in serve receive, he's further off the net. The set is further off the net. Left foot in front, behind the 10-foot line. Last step when the ball is in the setter's hands. Here he uses that negative step like you did. One, two, three, four. He's on his last step. You're on your penultimate step. You're on time for a higher set. The one and a half or 31 and a half. Even though he takes four steps with the negative step, his left foot is behind the 10 foot line. Take a look at your outside spiking. You're hitting a high set, so you need to be on your first step when the ball is in the setter's hands. You can see how far in front of the 10 foot line your left foot is. This needs to be much further back. So even though you are jumping high and hitting hard, you can jump even higher and hit even harder. Two players to look at are Taylor Sander and Ishikawa from Japan. As he approaches out of serve receive, look how far back behind the 10 foot line his left foot is. He is using a four step approach out of serve receive. One, two, left foot behind the 10 foot line. Ishikawa's strength is attacking when he's close to the net. In some situations, you don't have time to get all the way back. So he excels in those situations because he starts with his left foot in front. Here, he, does, he can't start with his right foot in front because he would be too close to the net. So starting with your left foot in front is more effective in this situation. As you get deeper off the net, you want to start with your right foot in front and take a four-step approach. Like right here, he should be taking a four-step approach, but he has his left foot in front. He takes more of a left-right-left -left approach. This play works here because the set is off the net. The set were a little bit closer, it might be a little more difficult for him to hit.
Lucarelli here, you can see he's further off the net. So he steps with his right foot first, right, left, right, left. See there, that was a perfect use of a three-step approach. You can see he doesn't have time to get all the way back, so he keeps his left foot in front and takes a small first step with his left foot. Here he has his left foot in front, and again this set is really far off the net. If the set were a little bit closer, four-step approach would be the best to attack it. Last thing we're going to look at is your blocking. Specifically how you bring your hands up to the outside. In the middle here, you actually do it pretty well. You can see your hands are out in front of you early. And you're not only getting above the net, but you're getting over the net early. Here you do it well. You press your hands not only above, but over the net early. Sometimes when you're blocking outside, your hands are just going above the net and they're pressing over a little bit late. You want to try to get here earlier. If you look at this image here, they have their hands over the net. Their arms aren't up straight here, they're out in front of them.